Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us on this very interesting call. We have with us the promoters of Ease, Easy Trip Planners. Uh, the brand name is Ease My Trip. And I, I think it's a very exciting internet story, one that has been bootstrapped, unlike many others, where you have you know, funded by venture or by listing or what have you. Here, I think it's a great story which we'll hear today. I have with me promoters of the company, Nishant and Prashant, uh, Pitti, both. Hi, hi guys. Uh, thank you for taking your time. Uh, so on behalf of BNK Securities, I would like to thank you and welcome you on this platform. You are actually the first, we started this new ideation series and you are the first one on this, uh, doing this. So I just, I think it's great. Uh, and so maybe what I can do is if you guys can talk a bit about yourself uh, first and then we can do a Q&A session uh, in terms of the you know, long-term strategic vision of the company and plan. Yeah. So Nishan, over to you. Uh, hi. Hi everyone. This is Prashant. I'm a graduate from IIT Madras. I graduated in the year 2005 and I was working for a couple of banks uh, in the US. And in the meantime, my two younger brother Nishan and Rikant. Uh, they both started the company in year 2008. So we have been in the market since last 13 years and we have, we have been doing this business for almost 13 and a half years now. And there are a few things, you know, which I think only this company can say in the entire world. In the entire world. One of those things is you cannot find any other e-commerce company in any country who has successfully done an IPO without raising money from any investor or bank ever. I know it's a very strong statement and I have been looking for examples in Israel, in China, in US and I couldn't find it. And that is why I'm able to say this. E-commerce company, not internet company, e-commerce company. We are an e-commerce company, right? 100% of our product is sold online where people have to pay money via the payment gateway. You cannot find any other e-commerce company who has done an IPO without raising any money. The regular internet story is raise money, burn money, raise money, burn money, raise money, burn money. And after 15 years, 20 years, turn profitable. This company has not seen one single quarter where we were in losses. Not even one quarter. Forget about the year. We have not seen one quarter when we were in losses. In fact, even in the first quarter of FI21, which was the COVID year, when there was a complete lockdown, even in that quarter, this company made 2.5 crore rupees as profit. And in the recently concluded quarter, which was a devastating quarter because of COVID wave 2, even in that quarter, this company made 20 crores as PBT. So, you know, COVID must be the litmus test for a travel company, isn't it? There cannot be a bigger challenge for a travel company than COVID. And we have passed that with a flying color. In both the quarters, we have made profit. Our company is so resilient and so nimble that it is actually very difficult for anybody to make it loss making. We will have to do a very, very good job to make this company loss making. Let me put it that way. Now, a brief introduction about the company. The company is a travel company. You can buy any services. You can buy flight, hotel, bus, train, all the services which are available on any travel portal on easemitrip.com. We are the second largest on the basis of flight tickets sold. And we are, we are growing very rapidly for all our other, other uh, you know, transactions, be it hotel, bus, train limited. And the company is growing profitably. The company has zero debt. The company has around 200 odd crores as cash surplus in the books. And the company is asset light. There is no asset this company holds. It's an asset light form. The reason why we have been able to reach where we have reached without raising money is because we see this business very differently. 
the way we see this business is it's a commodity business whether you buy air tickets or hotel room or bus ticket or train ticket from anybody your experience for that particular moment will not change whether you're using me or xyz website what it's a commodity business and in a commodity business what matters is if we are able to give you good price by keeping our cost low we will win and that is exactly what our procedure is in the last 13 years we have always given customers an option to not to pay convenience fees on e smarter now many of you must be aware about what convenience fees is but let me give you a little bit color around it for the ones who are not aware when you start booking your air ticket let's say you see price 4000 rupees on each my trip and xyz website you will see the same price but at the end of the booking the xyz website will add 300 rupees per passenger as convenience fees so if four of you are going it's four multiplied by 300 rupees 1200 rupees and this is the convenience fees Ismart in the last 13 years have always provided customer an option to not to pay convenience fees and hence you will be able to save that 1200 rupees okay. our company is not a marketing driven company we allow customers to book flight cheaply and we don't spend much money on marketing so in the last 13 years put together we must have spent let's say 80 crores on marketing 80 put together by the industry leader has spent 1260 crores 1260 crores just in fi20 just in one year by our budget for that particular year was 25 crores so our marketing budget is 2% of theirs and yet we are growing faster now let me tell you how fast we are growing i'm only comparing air segments okay the industry leader has hotel business you know holiday business bus train business some of it is acquired because they have acquired red bus they have acquired ibibo some of it is their uh, you know organic but let me just compare their air business with our air business because that is what we are strongest at in fi19 the industry leader was 5.6 times bigger than inspired in selling air segments in fi20 they were 4.2 times bigger in FI21, they were 2.7 times bigger. And in recently concluded quarter, they were 2.3 times bigger. I mean, these are hard statistics, which are coming from their financial and our financial. Every year, we are inching closer towards them. And that too profitably. Without burning money. That too profitably. This is how you'll have to unmute yourself. Yeah, Prashant, hi. So, so let me just kind of stop you here and then we can come back to these points because very interesting points. But let's start, actually, just go back a bit. You know, tell us a bit about your journey as a family, how you all, you know, your three brothers, all three of you, very young. How did you actually stumble upon this? Just give that a bit. That would be great to first start, like to just get some idea on all right, all right. A little bit about more about the background. As I said, that I was in the US and Nishant and Rikan, they started the company. So maybe Nishant, you can talk so, about So uh, I graduated from uh, Delhi University. I did my BCom honors and passed out in 2007. When I was in 2005 itself, uh, we uh, started up a small time travel agency named at Duke Travels. In that agency, we used to buy tickets from the third party consolidators on offline mode at that time, like 16 years back, how the travel agent used to book tickets. So at that time, we faced certain problems which a smaller travel agent were facing. So we tried to eradicate or to solve the problem of those small agents and build up EasyMyDrip. So the basic agenda to start EasyMyDrip was to resolve the problems of the travel agents. Like at that time, we used to send mails to the consolidator who were the IDA agents to get our tickets issued. It takes like 15 to 20 odd minutes. By that time, the customer may get out of your office also. The commission structure which we used to get from the consolidator or from the airline but not that great because you are providing them with a volume of 4 to 5 lakh rupees a month you have to deposit five different uh, because all the airlines work on advanced module all the low-cost carrier works on the advanced model so you have to deposit money with each and every airline to get the tickets booked 
you cannot book the ticket without you have uh, funds in the account. So that's how Ismail started to solve the problem of the travel agents. In the first three years, from 2008, 9, 10, 11, we got almost 43,000 travel agents registered on our platform, which were booking tickets for their customers. Millions of tickets had been booked. Where branding of Ismail were given to the consumers. There were almost 16,000 boards outside the travel agency's offices. Like you see, ABC Travel, so Ismail Trip, ABC Travel was written onto the high-end high shops of the country. So you just imagine like 16,000 to 18,000 holdings across the India, how much one has to pay to get those holdings. So those sort of branding we got and later on in 2011, we got to know like uh, we were getting hits directly on our website. Then uh, we thought of that, uh, you know, why not start direct consumer business, wherein other companies were charging convenience fees at that time. So we thought of we are good with the commission, what we are earning from the airline. line, we will not charge consumers extra amount. Because the psyche of the consumer which was coming onto a website that if a travel agent is using Ismail for booking their tickets, why not we directly go to Ismail and buy tickets over there. That's how it started. And now the business is completely flipped. 93% of my business is consumer business and 7% is travel agent business. Even That's though great. we started the travel agent business. Now we are directly in heads on, you know, competition with make my trip, clear trip and yatra as 93% of my business is coming from direct consumers who visit my website. Right. So, but when, obviously when you started and that was as a family business and it, I'm sure you were, you're not thought about listing and so on. And you all must have also made some mistakes. Uh, if you go back in the past, any such mistakes that you think you made in while stumbling upon doing things and you know and what does the learning from that that will be pretty useful to know also so I'll, I'll talk about one of the things which almost got his matter killed uh, that was in year 2008 late part of year 2008 where Nishant and I were even talking that why did we even do this I remember that conversation yeah. so at that time as I said that they were, we were working with the travel agents right one of the travel agents using pay credit card Conned us for 26 lakh rupees in the beginning itself. In the in the first four or five months, we were caught. And at that time, we lost it all. You know, it, we come from a very humble background. It's not that we have a huge backing. We come from an extremely humble background. And at that time, you know, the thoughts came in my mind, thoughts came in our mind that why are we even doing this if we can be conned so easily? But you know, the, the sanity or insanity prevailed, and we continue to push forward. And we ensured that nobody is able to call us in the future. We, we ensured that our protocols are so strong that we are able to catch fake credit cards and stuff like that. So, you know, those kind of mistakes didn't happen. And in general, you know, on, on the way, there are hundreds of mistakes which we have made. See, mistake is never a problem. The problem is in decisions. When you do not take decisions, that costs you time, which is the biggest disabler for a startup. Mistakes are never a problem. But you also did some like financing of film, etc. also, right? Things like that. So, can tell us a bit about that as well? So, yeah, maybe that, that would also be constituted as naiveness. I would not call that as a mistake. I would call it as a naiveness of our company. So, uh, in the interest of everybody, I will talk about what exactly it was. So, you know, back in year 2013-14, we got a couple of film producers approaching us that if we will do in film advertisement for Ismail trip, pay us 20 lakh, 25 lakh rupees as an amount. And we, we agreed. We thought that hey, movies can be a good way to reach people. So I can quote you so many examples where Katrina Kaif is saying, I use Ismail trip for that matter. Right? I can say so many examples. We, we did a lot of in film promotions. Now, later on, those promoters, those producers came to us saying that, hey, finance my movie. And I will do in film advertisement free for you. Where we gave them some loans. It was purely a loan. We gave them some loans. And then later on, those loans turned bad when the movie flopped. If the movie was hit, we would get that money back. But if the movie goes flop, we would lose that loan. So in year 2017, we took a call that we will not finance the movie business. In order to get in film promotions, we would, we would stop doing it. And we took a write-off of some amount at that particular time. That amount is also getting recovered as we speak. Eventually, I think the write-off will be of around 5 to 10 euros at max. 
But the lessons I learned that there are no free lunches in the world. Right. So those are the lessons which I learned. Yeah. So even uh, things like trading, you'll have some trading done here and so on. So as a company, you have taken a call now that now that you're listed of you know what not to do. You know, a lot of times that is also as important as what to do, right? See, again, you know, pre-IPO, the hundred percent company belonged to us. Right. And the company was company was always cashless, as I said, right? So let's say there is hundred crore sitting in the bank of the company. No, we may have taken some calls to optimize that money over the period of time. But then when we realize that we have become too big, you know, in the travel space itself, in year 2018, we took a call, we removed the line item that we will not be doing these activities. And those activities were anyways 1% or 1.5% of our entire business model. It wasn't that those activities were big. It was 1% to 2% of our entire business model. But then to come out clean, we remove those as a line item from our books. And since 2018, it's been four years. We are not doing any other activity besides the travel activity right. in the company. And now, right. now more so that the public is involved in this company. We have a highest standard of protocols of governance, which we follow. We have three independent directors in the company and we follow, we want to follow each and every protocol of governance to ensure that we are giving nothing less than 100% of trust to the investors we can. But that takes me to a point, why list? You know, you're already very profitable. You know, here you have to do all these, you know, to worry about minority investors and so on. Why did you decide to list? Would you think there's any benefit of listing? Uh, only if you could open Google Trends, I will show you the live answer. Uh, if I could share, I could show you the screen. I don't know how to show you, you the screen. You can share a screen if you want. If you want, you can share a screen. I, I don't have a laptop in front of me, but how do I do that? I don't know. Anyways, yeah. you guys are all very knowledgeable. Just go to Google Trends and see how many hits Ease My Trip is getting compared to Make My Trip or Clear Trip post IPO. You know, you will clearly see the benefit of listing, which we thought we will gain, but it is actually coming now. Right. It is actually a reality. Our number of hits have gone three times by hits I mean visits on the website or app because of the listing. Hmm. So one of and the, the reason for listing in India is that we could have listed in the you know, US and other places where we could have enjoyed better, better valuations, much better right. valuations. But the benefit of listing in India is that the, we are purely an Indian company. We wanted to highlight and get the free mileage of the marketing which we get by getting listed in India. Like every news channel you are there on the results, every quarter you are onto the news channels, which is a free marketing. Our shout is that is my the cheapest flight ticket provider, right? Or the travel provider. So that comes from the marketing. Even without spending now, we are getting those mileage. Right. And what about the currency that you're getting because of your market cap? You think that is useful to kind of grow that business as well? Humongously, that's right. Humongously. We didn't know how valuable this currency could be. That's another thing. See, pre-IPO, nobody had ever invested in these metrics. So there was no value for our currency, right? There was no value for our share. But post-IPO now, our share has some value thanks to investors like you. There is some value in the share. At this particular time, we are speaking to 11 companies whom we can acquire and grow inorganically in our hotel, see, non-air space. Air, we are very sorted. Air, we are going in a direction and it's almost irreversible where we're heading towards. For the non-air, we may need some support. And for that, we will acquire some companies. And the easiest way to acquire a company for us right now is a share swap. If an XYZ company is worth 20 crores, we buy their shares and issue new shares worth 20 crores. So there is zero cash involvement in that process. And we started talking with 80 companies. Now we have shortlisted 11 companies and we have signed term sheet with few uh, right now. So this currency can come out humongously valuable for us to acquire in the non-air space. Talking about non-air space, first let me tell you about organic growth in non-air space. In the recently concluded quarter, our total transaction in non-air space was 1.95 lakhs. 
while in the entire year of FI21, our total non-year transaction was 2.55 lakhs. That means even in the COVID-ridden quarter, we were able to do 80% of the entire year. Hmm. This is the pace at which our non-year segment is growing. Air, I've already told you enough. Right. We are growing, we are growing profitably. We are becoming a serious threat to the number one player as we are inching closer to them every quarter on quarter. On the non-year side, we have done 80% of the entire year, last year's uh, transaction in hmm. the quarter which was COVID written. Right. So that's so, the group we have done. But sorry, uh, we'll come back to business and I'll finish my last question on the culture and thought process. You guys have taken a big salary cut this year, right? Uh, as promoters. So just tell us a bit about that. You know, what's the thought? What are you thinking? It'll be good to kind of, again, get your Absolutely. perspective. Yeah. See, at East by Trip, we have put in an equity worth of 7 crores in the company in the 13 years. We started with 5 lakh, but we have kept on taking loans to infuse money in the company. So put together, put together as promoters, we have put 7 crores in the company and there was a loan for which we were taking salaries to repay those loans. Right? But post the IPO, we have created good wealth for ourselves, right? You know, the IPO was also entirely OFS. That's right. And that is why we have some wealth for ourselves. And also now 75% of the company is still ours, right? And we have no vision of letting that go in any short, in short term or medium term. Now, there is no need for us to, you know, have higher amount of salaries. And that is why we reduce as three promoters, we used to draw seven crores as a salary on an annual basis, put together between three promoters. Now we are going to be drawing two crore and 90 lakh or some amount as, as, as a salary. So we have taken a salary cut as it's a conscious decision to free the company as well a bit. And you know, that, that, that's, that's, that's something which we have done. Sure. And so one point you mentioned about diluting further, one of the things you did talk about is acquisition and, you know, and by swapping equity, is there a kind of a limit that you'll put at how much will you dilute as a, you know, as a business? Yeah. So we, we have some thoughts in our mind. Right. At max, we will not go beyond 5% of the company value. Right. So, so that's, that's the upper limit. So that it sure. doesn't even affect anybody. 5% of dilution doesn't mean much, right? Sure. So, and, so put together the amount you could consider is somewhere around 200 to 250 crores. Right. Is the amount sure. maximum which will be diluted. Okay, perfect. Great. I think let's get into the business side. So maybe let's just start with air air first, right? Maybe if you can give us the industry size, how you break it up, what is it for the online players? That would be great to kind of just get a sense of. All right. So I first give you the industry which exists right now. And then I talk about I'll talk about what the industry will look like in FI twenty five. Right. In FI twenty, let's let, let me not talk about the current numbers because they are a y they go up and down all the time. In FI twenty, the airline industry was ninety thousand crores industry, okay, ninety thousand crore industry, and we did business of four thousand crores. So there is still so much of room for us to grow in the airline industry. Now the current number. If there are 100 passengers flying, 15 would have used directly the airlines, whether they are standing in the queue or whether they are booking on their website. 15 would have used direct airlines. 30 to 35 would have used offline mediums, which is offline travel agents, which constitutes to 50%. And remaining 50% is basically between the OTAs like us. OTAs like Make My Trip, Clear Trip, Yatra, Isma Trip, Pixigo, blah blah, many. They are about seven or eight players, right? That is the 50%. Our share of the 100% is 8% of the 100%. And as I said, the industry leader is 2.3 times bigger than me. That means Make My Trip of the 100% should be at 18 to 19%. And 18 to 19% there, 8% is us. Which, which basically makes us 27%. And then the remaining 23% is distributed among 7 or 8 years. This is the current market share. Right. Now, the airline industry, which is a 90,000 crore industry in FI20, is poised to become 1.5 lakh crore industry by FI25. 
since that itself is growing at 15% year on year. From 90,000 to 1.5 or to 1.6 lakh crore industry over a period of time. Now, at least that market, see, we are doing our level best in hotel, bus, train, and we are growing. We did almost 80% of the entire year in one quarter, right? And then we are also going to grow by an organic growth. Right. Forget all that. Forget all that. At least in year space, which is going to become 1.5 lakh crore industry. Numbers speak for ourselves of where we are heading towards. And that industry, we must be the market leader by FY25. Right. We ought to be the market leader. But what about competition? You think people like Amazon, people like Geo, all these guys can come in and try, try and disrupt you? You know, obviously it's not happened that much in the world also, you know, they've all been there. But just may maybe, you know, what, why is it not happening or wh why do you think it's not that big a thing? I'm glad you asked this question. Hmm. Now, what are the possible disruptions, right? The disruptions can only come from Amazon, Geo, you know, Flipkarts, right? These are the places where disruptions can come. Because they have infinite amount of deep pockets. We totally understand and respect that. The answer of the pudding is in eating. Basically, since last four years, Flipkart and Amazon have been trying this. Mm. It's not that they will come and disrupt. They have been trying this. And we have not seen them make dent so far. And I'll tell you why. You should also look at the US as an answer. Amazon.com did try this market in US. But failed and Expedia is still the market leader in the US. Now why? Right. See, there are two kinds of e-commerce companies. We are an e-commerce company and Flipkart and Amazon is also an e-commerce company. But there are two kinds of e-commerce companies. One which is selling perishable unit and the one which is selling non-perishable unit. We are selling perishable unit. If I do not serve you in five minutes, you may lose your entire money. Because flight may take off. That's right. While the ones who are selling Dabba, those are unperishable in it, right? Even if you serve me two days later, it's fine. The Dabba is right. Dabba, right? That is why Amazon.com, Flipkart.com do not have an open line where you can call and talk to them. Now, in order to serve our kind of you know business, you have to have open lines where people can call you. Supposedly, right. when you get a hotel, you go to a hotelier, the hotelier says to you that your voucher is not there. We have not received right. the voucher from the travel company. So it has to have solved in five minutes of time. Over the call itself, it needs to be solved. But that's not right. the case with the Flipkart or the Amazons. So right. because of this perishable unit item, and now they cannot open a line to speak to customer just because they're selling flight, right? Because when they do, they will be bombarded by millions of calls who are selling the who are purchasing the bar. Correct. So same way, we have a limitation that I cannot sell the bus better than Amazon. And Amazon has a limitation that they cannot sell, sell flights better than we are, at least in the same brand. Right. At least the same brand. Sure. This is the reason why the chances of disruptions are very minimal, at least right. in selling flights, bus, train, hotels. What about the, uh, the airlines themselves? Are they... You know, if they get their act better. So, this question was valid four years ago. Four or maybe five years ago, when you used to book your tickets through desktop, it's pretty much easier for you to open five different websites. Now you're Correct. using up an app to compare the prices. If you're trying to fly, uh, fly down from Delhi to Bombay or Bombay to Delhi, you have like seven airlines, which are giving you different uh, types, uh, types of fares, time, so which you can't go and check on seven different uh, websites on your mobile. It's not right. the easy process if you are just searching on your mobile, you open different browser, then you check on the price on the first browser. It's not that much easy. Five years before, 5% of searches were happening on desktop. Now 87% searches are happening on mobile. Right. How many apps have you got downloaded? Like, are you looking at that as a number also? See, I think the, this is the biggest hawks in the industry, the number of downloads. It's the mm -hmm. biggest hawks. I'll tell you one statistics which should open everybody's, you know, point of view. An app gets uninstalled. 80% of the apps gets uninstalled within the same day. 
80. So total number of cumulative downloads doesn't even matter. Right. What matters is how many are used right now. Right. And it doesn't matter. Really, that's not the we, we have we have gotten total cumulative downloads of 5.5 million so far. Right. right. Really, that doesn't not matter at all in any sense. Sure. What matters is what's the usage. So for us, right. 87 percent of our searches are happening on mobile web or our application. 87 percent right. because of which we as in the OTA industry has become a necessary evil right. and over the period of time the share which is getting sold directly on airlines is only reducing it's only going mm. down it's not right sure uh, so actually let's just go to one point uh, which is let's stick to airline right now and if we look at your revenue model today Right. So let's say I bought a round trip ticket on Indigo, let's say 10,000 rupees. What is exactly, and I bought it through Is My Trip. How does that revenue work here? We will be able to give you cumulative numbers. I will not be able to give you a breakup because we do not provide breakup by airlines in our uh, quarterly results. Sure. So, so on, on the high level, we make anywhere between 8 to 10 percent margins for the flights right. which we. And there are five ways by which we earn. On this five ways, all these five ways put together gives me eight to ten percent. One is commissions from the airlines. Hmm. Second is incentives from the GDS. Third is convenience fees. We do charge convenience fees in some cases. Fourth is cancellation. When you cancel, we do charge cancellation service fees. And fifth is incentives from credit card and prepaid card. Hmm. These are the five ways by which we earn, and put together we earn eight to ten percent. Okay. Of the and you, you are you, but one of your biggest thing is that you all have been you know not charging convenience fee pretty much. You say you may charge some plus in general that's your USP right that you don't don't charge, charge convenience. Fee. Yes, we don't charge convenience fees, but in some cases, wherein if, if a consumer is uh, you know asking for a discount code and comparing right. with our competitors. So we say to them that you have to, uh, you are getting up a coupon code from there. You are getting 500 rupees off, but at the last day you end up paying 350 rupees more also. So just right. to cater those consumers, we had also given certain coupon codes. So okay. whenever you are using a coupon code, you have to pay convenience fees on each matter. When you are right. not using a coupon code, then you don't have to pay convenience fees. This way it's an apple to apple comparison. Right. No, no, fair point. I think that's an interesting strategy. Yeah. What other strategy that you are doing? You know, if you can, you know, give examples of some strategy of kind of. This is a commodity industry in many ways, as you said. I can go to ease my trip. I can go to make my trip. I can go to IBO, whatever, and have a similar experience. It's not as if I'm getting an experience wise something fabulously great, uh, which is different. I'm saying. So, what is it that is? You know, how are you trying to kind of keep the customer? How are you attracting the customer? So is the the only USP of not charging convenience fees would not have gotten us over here. Right. There must be hundreds of things which we would be doing and they became, you know, it's not like they were obvious as an answer to us. They came, we stumbled upon them over the last 13 years and that is how we have become such highly efficient and lean machine. I can talk about hundreds of other things which we have done differently, but maybe let me just quote one or two different. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. So one of the examples, let's say you are traveling on your honeymoon to Goa, okay? And suddenly one of you fell ill and you cannot travel. And you are in a distressed situation. It's a place where, you know, you have overspent. You'd never fly. This is the first time you're flying, right? For your honeymoon. Now you call up a call center saying that, Bhai, mere, mere ko hai. please mujhe refund karo. Mere liye bahut important hai paisa. Ab I mean, you know, whenever they are giving you refund, right? They like deduct 3,000 rupees per passenger between 3,000 to 3,500 rupees. Our call center would deny saying that, Bhai, how, what can I have? Airline will deduct, we, they will deduct, right? Okay. Now, and at times, even though we have told them to, you know, take the exception, the, the, the executives do not have power to take such decisions, right? Now, what we have done is, we have created a kitty for our executives where we allow them 5% of our profit as a decision. It's a kitty of 5% of the profit 
they can make decisions on their own without even asking their managers so if the kitty allows every month there is a kitty if the kitty allows they can give refund to people at their own discretion at their own decision so if they find somebody is truly a distressed situation they can commit we will give you that amount whether we get money from the airlines or not we will try to get that money from the airlines later but we have given a commitment to the customer on the phone itself they find we will give you the refund because mm. of the reserve. and these are the times when you create value for yourself see Very when you apply 12% of the time when you're cancelling right when you're not cancelling your ticket you don't need to offer service you don't need our service you just fly you don't have That's to call us but only in the cases when you're cancelling your ticket when you're rescheduling your ticket you need our services mm. so by creating a kitty by empowering our executives to take such calls we have created humongous amount of brand value for our customers right mm. that's one example the recent example which we did very very recently a month ago is you know we think it's a path breaking service the the times will tell of how it you know how it procures but if you go to ismart right now you will see that for all domestic tickets for any domestic tickets you book we are allowing customers to get 100% refund back 100% even the money deducted by the airlines we are allowing customers 100% back only if they are cancelling because of a medical emergency mm. all they have to do is upload a doctor's prescription on ismartrip and they will get their full money back for the flight cancel now this is the need of the hour right why you and i are not booking tickets right now we are worried what if we catch covid what if we are in quarantine what if our family is sick this is the reason why we are not booking right not to ease customer in making such decisions this is first of its kind service and this service is you know absolutely free to customers our competitors also do some service like that but they charge customers for it 399 rupees additional as an insurance zero insurance this is free to all is what a customer just upload a prescription and you will get all your money back as a cancellation but you know won't you be kind of subject to some fraudulent kind of things in here how are you safeguarding against that so, so we have a banker who's underwriting all of it right. there is zero amount of risk which we are taking by mm. doing there is zero right. amount of risk okay and then that's great great so uh, i i guess we talked about the airline and you have 95% of your business coming from that you talked about you know that uh, you're getting there's one last thing on, on this uh, it is a reasonably commodity business as we discussed and you and you want that's why one of the things that you are doing is convenience fee of course you are adding the bells and whistles by making it better service but i guess the biggest uh, thing for a company like yours would be cost right how to keep the cost the lowest and of course you know you guys have done a fabulous job of keeping the cost low but maybe you can talk a bit about it like how or what like that cost control and how you are managing to do that so thanks thanks for asking the solution i should have answered this before let me compare ourselves to the industry leader okay right. a very good apple to apple comparison the fixed cost of this company or any company is basically the employee cost and the admin cost right marketing expenditure the discounts you, you know payment gateway charges they are the function of gmv basically if you are doing more tv you spend more on marketing right but the employee cost and the admin cost is something which you cannot play around a lot with for this company our employee cost and our admin cost put together is 2.3% of our gmv agar hum 100 rupees ka business karte hai to 2.3 rupees kharcha karte hai employee cost and admin cost ke andar right an equivalent comparison for our competitor the industry leader if they do For for FI twenty one numbers, I'm sorry, I'm speaking for the FI twenty one numbers. If they do GMP of hundred rupees, so or beka dhanda karte hai, so wo nine point five rupees khach karte hai. Employee ke andar added with the other. Hum two point three wo nine point five. Now this itself will tell you ki kaise wo profitable ho sakte. Hamara business hi eight to nine percent uh, margin ka hai. See, we make eight to nine percent margin. we lose 2.3 in employee and admin cost remaining 
is what we play around on marketing discounts and we come out profitable. While for our competitor, they also make 9% margin. They lose 9.5 in employee and admin only. Forget about marketing expenditures, discounts given, payment gateway charges. And that is why they are in losses. This is precisely why they are in losses. So we have kept a very good tight control on our expenditures. And that is how we are able to remain profitable even without charging convenience fees. The irony of the situation is we don't charge convenience fees yet we are profitable. Our, all of our competitors charge convenience fees yet all of them are in losses. Right. And you also talked about how you have like one office building where you've kept people. You know, so you know, what about all that you know, in terms of just as a cost focus of the organization? So see, what we had built it on, so unlike our competitor, if you go to Kolkata, I'm sure, sure that you're sitting in Kolkata, you must have seen in the Park Street, you would have seen, uh, you know, our competitor's offices. Or like, right. uh, the, all the high streets of India, they have offices. So why do, do you need an office if you are doing an online business? We don't, mm -hmm. uh, we think so that if you are into an online business, you don't need a fancy office, you don't need a presence onto the online or the offline stores. The only presence that you need is to the online, you are getting to the online consumer. You are not catering, you don't want somebody to walk into your office, ask for a ticket. We don't want that. We are an That's online right. company, we don't want to employ people, poor people sitting idle and think that a consumer will turn to your office and buy a ticket. So that's the right. difference. So that's why we right. have a consolidated building over here. Almost 95% hmm. uh, of the people sit out here. Right. Okay, great. So that does that also mean that if let's say the business was to double from here and let's say, as you said, you know, you're going from, let's say, last year's 90,000 crore to 1,50,000 crore. Let's assume that, you know, the online side actually grows faster. And let's assume for a minute that, you know, you'll keep your market share. You won't grow the market share, but let's assume you'll keep. But even there, you can potentially double the business, right? Given that OD, you know, online itself will grow. What happens to your cost? Like, what is the proportion? Because I guess the big thing about internet companies is the operating leverage, right? So, how does that work? Why, why do you, why do we value Zomato at one lakh crores right now? You know, we all collectively we have valued them as one lakh crore company, even though they are loss making, right? The idea is that as they continue to grow their business, their costs are not going to change much. That is why we value them so much. That is why we value Paytm so much, even though that's a hugely loss making business, right? This is the idea. The internet companies have this ability to grow much faster without growing their cost because everything is online. Like mm. I will not even blink my eye today if I make let's say 15,000 transactions. If you pass me 2 lakh customers and we have to do 2 lakh transactions today, I we will not even blink our eye. Right? It can we don't need to think anything. We don't need to hire anybody. We don't need to talk to our servers. Everything's cloud based. Everything uh, goes up, uh, scales up automatically. We don't need to do, right. uh, do anything. So this is the beauty of it. Like the cost and profit, uh, the cost and the revenues, they are not correlated in internet businesses. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and but what about the ad and marketing expense? You kept it so low, and you said it's pretty effective. Obviously, you can see that your market share is growing, so it's obviously very effective what you are doing. But would that also? What would you need to do there? So the way we look at marketing expenditure is we try to predict how much of GMV we will be doing in this year. Right. So let's say my prediction for this internal prediction is 3,300 crores. Okay. For that matter, 3,200 crores, 3,000 crores for that matter. Right. We can do a multiplier of 0.7% or 0.8%. And we will put that as a marketing budget in the company. Hmm. So right. for us, it's a reverse calculation. For, hmm. for, for us, it's not that we think that we will only be able to hit 3,000 crore business if we do so much of marketing. No. Sure. See, we are not marketing wizards. Please mm. do not get us wrong that make my trip spend 1260 crores in marketing and yet they are not growing. And I mean, they are growing, but not growing at as fast as he's matter. And he's my trip spends 25 crores in marketing and yet is growing faster than make my trip. It's not that we are marketing wizards. We are growing primarily because of word of mouth. It's very clear to us. You got to know that you can sell, you can save 300 rupees per passenger. Why would you not use it tomorrow? You just got to know about it today. Let's say. Right. 
and then you will also want to tell it to your friends and family because it's a very simple way to save money. It's the easiest way to save money. Right. So, so we are growing primarily by our word of mouth, not because of my marketing budget. Our marketing budgets are calculated as a percentage of GMV. Right. Sure. So let's come to the next point. Other businesses other than airline, you know, it seems that at least hotel businesses seem to be more profitable. Uh, bus business, I'm not, I, you know, is similar to airline business. So, but if you look at the overall thing where, you know, in terms of growth, you talked about that you're already growing pretty fast, but it's a very small base right now and you're even looking for acquisition. But maybe you can talk a bit about that, that what's your thought over the next five years with this, you know, which is 5% now, where will you think and what are you doing about it? Any particular strategy other than acquisition? So it's, it's going to be very hard to predict. I'll be very honest. The reason is, it's not that my air growth is stagnated. My air mm -hmm. itself is growing. From FY18 till FY20, my air grew 47% year on year. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when, when you're, with what you're comparing, that itself is growing so fast, it's mm -hmm. hard for us to predict of how fast can this grow, how to grow my air mm -hmm. business, right? But, but the idea is that, you know, we should be growing five times. 10 times. We should not be growing 50%, right? right. In the non use case. That's the idea. We should be growing 2x, 3x, 5x. That's that's how we are seeing our non air segment grow. Right. So clearly, if we are cross selling right now. We are growing via cross selling. And that's the that's the idea to continue the growth by cross selling. In some time, we will start allocating some marketing budgets specifically for non air growth as well. That will also happen over the period of time. But one thing we are we will never do, we will never play the game which others are playing, which is earn, burn today to earn tomorrow. We will not right. do that. Right. And inspector, every transaction must be unit profitable or at least break even to say the hmm. least. Right. And that is how we will play the game. We will not lose a bunch of money today to earn tomorrow. We will not do right. that. So, so there will be a good portion of growth which will come from organic and there will be a very good portion of growth which will come via inorganic. Hmm. But to put together in the in the next five years, we want to take it to 80-20. Sure. Okay. And that's a, that's a great target to have. Uh, so, I guess you're talking about, uh, we've, we've talked about, uh, you know, airline, we've talked about inorganic. Growth. Maybe what we can do is uh, talk a bit about the company from some of the numbers itself. And what I'll do is I'll get our analyst, Mr. Deep Shah, on here as well on the stage, and he can ask a few questions sure. uh, on that. Yeah. So, yeah. Hi, Deep. Uh, hey, hi. Thanks, thanks, Ajib. Uh, so, yeah. Hello. Uh, so. I think let's get to the most topical questions first. Uh, every uh, client asked us if you would just better explain your uh, liabilities of 107 crores. I think that is something which has uh, which has been a very topical question. Do you mean liabilities or are you talking about uh, the other financial liabilities in your balance sheet of 107 crores? 107 crores, okay. Yeah. Should I answer this first and then you ask the other question? Yeah, yeah. Let's take it that way. No problem. So there is a component called as UAC in our other income, unclaimed credit. We book that revenue every year. It's called as unclaimed credit and it comes in our other income. Now that 107 crores is a short, short money, which this company will earn in the next two and a half years. It's a liability which keeps getting shifted as a revenue as the time passes by. It's, it's sitting as a liability where we can, customer can ask for that money, but only 90%, only 10% of that money goes away to the customer. 90% of that money stays with the company, stays put with the company and translates into a revenue. And now, right. I'm sure you so must then, be seeing uh, that. Would it be fair to say it's, it's actually your deferred revenue? It's exactly our deferred revenue. Right. Which is sitting as a liability in the company. Well, fair enough. Uh, also, uh, one more question I keep on getting is, so uh, your advertisement as a proportion of sales fell down to 15% uh, this year, FY21. Uh, how do you see this moving forward? Because it was at 20-21%, 20, 
uh, last year FY20, and then uh, so with the travel coming back, uh, do you think your competitors will spend a lot more to grab the incremental customers? How do you see this whole shape? We do not see the absolute number. To be honest, I, we do not care about the absolute number. What we care is my predicted GMV is so much, and I will do 0.7 to 0.8 percent of that as my marketing budget. Right. But do you and think? Uh, you know, quarter quarter. Quarter. Sorry. So we calculate that quarter on quarter that the number which we are for the marketing budget, we are achieving those numbers in real or not. So if the number has gone down, so then we can tweak the marketing budget immediately. Right. Right. No, but do you think that you know with travel coming back, probably some of your peers may uh, accelerate the pedal on marketing a bit more to get the incremental uh, market share? Let them do it. In FY20, industry leaders spent 1260 crores on marketing, right. yet they grew at 18 percent. One eight, they grew at 18 percent. We spent 25 crores on marketing, we grew at 47 percent. I am fine with them burning the money. See, the thing is. The beauty of being listed is, of course, we are getting a lot much more free marketing. Search is matter right now, and every day there is a news article coming on Ismatter. Every other day we are on TV talking to analysts about Ismatter, right? This is the free marketing which we are getting, which we were not getting before. Number one. Number two, by being listed, we have put pressure on the industry leader to turn profitable. They are tremendously under pressure to turn profitable. And how are they going to turn profitable? They are going to decrease their marketing. They are going to decrease their discount. And all of it is going to give me more tailwinds. If they give less discounts, more people will come to me. If they do less marketing, more people will come to me. If they increase their convenience fees, more people will come to me. Because I don't charge convenience fees. So honestly speaking, these are the biggest benefits which we are getting by being listed. There's a tremendous amount of pressure on the industry leader that why are you not profitable? If he's going to be so profitable, and it's created by investors like you, and rightly so, and as and when they become profitable, we are going to be the biggest beneficiaries. Fair enough. No, I think I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, also, another question which I had, uh, maybe slightly off on the long term basis. So we had this partnership with Jazdal that we uh, entered for flight routines. So how do you see this whole partnership model evolving? Where you know. There are a couple of horizontals, very strong, and then you have multiple verticals, each strong in their own way, in their respective spaces. So, how do you think this whole partnership model will evolve? Do you think this will be the way going forward, uh, or it is just one of uh, one of the distribution channels that you think about it? These distribution channels we count it under our B two B sales. These are not directly sold by us, so we can't count it under the B two C segment. So all these partnership comes under the B two B category, which is the five to seven percent of our business. Right now, no, but uh, yeah, I, I, to to add more uh, for what you were asking, we do see this as a great way to grow our business. The reason is it takes so much of time and effort for somebody to offer flight to their customers. Just that, for that matter, they would have had to tie up with seven domestic airlines and two hundred international airlines. Just to offer the flights to their customers, right, and maintain those APIs. Now, why would they do it? They would rather work with players like us, where we are powering their system and they are gaining some money from the customers who are visiting their website, isn't it? And right. so, so is the case with various other, you know, super apps you can call. For example, Flipkart, Amazon. They are also not tying up directly. Flipkart. Why do you think Flipkart acquired Clearter so that you know Clearter can continuously power their Flight segment, right? For that matter. So as and when these player comes, their first choice will be to approach companies like ours and and power their flight segment on their system using our APIs because we are already integrated. So we do see that as an opportunity to grow leaps and bounds in the future. So th thanks, Deep. Uh, so we'll open the session to Q and A. If you you can type your questions. On the chat, and we'll ask those questions. Uh, what we could do? Uh, what? So maybe I'll start with one or two questions that you know I had got from people. One was on your global ambitions. What are your global ambitions? How are you kind of taken? Because this, you know, this can easily be taken outside India. This model, right? So uh, 
pre ipo we had subsidiaries in three countries london singapore and dubai now very recently a month ago we have opened three more subsidiaries thailand philippines and us so put together we have six subsidiaries of ismatum in various countries see we, sorry uh, so these subsidiaries are about one or two people serviced offices or or is it yeah, of, course, of course just one or two people doing the regular mundane work getting the payment gateways integrated getting the airlines integrated in those right. respective countries hmm. very low cost where there is no office space they are working from remote location but we hmm. need physically one or two people in those countries right now we are by far the most lean efficient company in india right imagine us providing the same service to us customers while keeping our operations in india the same way as we have right now imagine how much of a margin we can enjoy by competing against the companies who are in the us working on our operational expenses as per their country while we are in india and that to the cheapest the most most cost effective company in india right our investors just will have to be patient with us we will right. not grow leaps and bounds right. we will grow slowly steadily the way we have grown is but faster than that but not like spreading money and not like marketing aggressively in those countries we will start marketing on google and facebook and grow slowly but there is a huge potential for this company to challenge the incumbents which are available on those countries Right. Right. Next question the is: is the, same. the technology is the same. There is no change in the technology. Exactly. There is the operation team is the same, hmm. exact same. All right. we have to do is integrate with some flights which are their domestic flights and integrate with their payment gateway. Uh, right. You know methods. That's all. Sure. Okay. Next question: You had a, a pretty large a uh, travel. Uh, agent kind of community early on as you started right now of course a lot of them are in you know kind of you know stable to de decaying mode but they were still pretty good at doing two packages and stuff like that right are you able to kind of use them in any way to grow that part of the business because you know i'm sure tour packaging must be a pretty high margin business absolutely so you you are absolutely right we have in the past we have worked with 56000 travel agents all across india by the way there are 70000 registered travel agents in india of which 56000 we have worked in the past now you are absolutely hmm. right they are not able to sell flights anymore they are diversifying themselves but one great opportunity which we are seeing is to allow them to sell holiday packages so there is one company in which we are talks with which company will allow these travel agents we will as we integrate that company into our company a travel agent will be able to download a holiday package and once they download the package our name will not be written anywhere the, their particular name their own name will be written and they will be able to forward that pdf on whatsapp to their clientele they will be able to collect money from their clientele and we will be able to give that money to us and the entire servicing will be done by us right so this way see only 10% of holiday packages are sold online 90% is still sold by the travel agent right that's where you require service that's where you require hand holding you have 10 type of different question that what sort of hotel you are staying in what how far is from the city center which can be answered by having a physical presence and we right. don't want open 100 200 offices across india let our travel hmm. agent come be used over there let them get an opportunity to earn money from there so we are acquiring a exactly. software for exact same reason hmm. Hmm. right hmm right okay one question and maybe a difficult question or i don't know up to you so it seems your you know i'm just reading out your cfo quit 4 months before the ipo and you have your company secretary has also quit i think recently any anything on that so our cfo quit during the covid times in the month of august or september 2020 uh, he quit he quit 
and I don't okay. understand why is that a big concern. Uh, you know, it's a COVID time. You know, he had some of family emergency for which he had to be. You know, but I know that this is one question which we have been asked. So no offense taken, but but I understand. You know, from our perspective, it was a very simple reason. You know, it was a COVID time and somebody quit during that time. Right, right. And we have when company secretary. We have a She's on maternity leave, and oh, uh, she, she, she's on maternity leave right now as well. And then we have hired somebody senior. We have actually even hired one agency to help us in the company, uh, company secretary side. Okay. Okay. Wait, I think I've you know we've taken a lot of your time already, uh, and only thing I would say I think it's really exciting to see an internet company which is bootstrapped, which is profitable, which has all the you know, positives of uh, operating leverage of an internet company, you know, really, you know, looking very exciting, looking, you know, all the best to you guys for, you know, I think you the guys have the actual leverage which we are going to get, we have not even talked about that. So, if what is that? Three to five years, the other companies are uh, charging 400 to 500 uh, convenience fees per passenger. Right. At that time, we see that you know our growth has been stagnant. Like it's not forty percent; it comes down to fifteen percent. So we might right. figure it out that instead of charging zero convenience fees, we might charge two hundred rupees or two fifty rupees at that time. Right. So there's a leverage of the company profitability. The like the, at that time we would be probably selling two crores or three crore tickets a year. So imagine three crores multiply by two hundred rupees. Straight away comes to our PPT. So is what Google is doing with Google Photos right now. So yeah, they yeah, just yeah. Started charging yeah. money for. Started charging, uh, and yeah, they're going to be feeling cool, right? right. <laughs> So, anyway, I think great. And anything else that I missed out, you want to make any last comment? And no, I mean, uh, to be honest, uh, we have fought this uh, battle with our blood and sweat for the last 13 years. It was definitely not an easy journey to reach till here. Things have only become easier for us. Things are only getting easier with every passing day. So by being listed, we have we are gaining trust of people that this is a genuine place where you can buy. Even though we do not advertise, this is a genuine place where you can buy a ticket and save yourself 300 rupees per passenger. Okay. This is one big benefit we are getting, right? Uh, you know, things are our our competition is also understanding that there is no point burning money. There is an ease my trip route by which you can actually grow while even making money. And as and when they stop burning money, we will be the biggest beneficiaries. So, you know, we, we have done all right, even in the toughest times, the, the easier days are coming, is, are, are, are ahead of us, uh, support us in our journey. Great. And you have your three brothers, I'm assuming you have equal skin in the game on this one, right? Yes. Great. I think that's, that's really great. Thank you so much, Prashant and Prashant. Right? Excellent talk and, you know, all the very best. Thank you. And on, Thank behalf you. Of, and on behalf of BNK Securities, I want everybody else who's participated a big thank you. And Thank you everyone for listening patiently to our blabber. Really appreciate it.